That was a tsunami siren, huh? <laughs> I'm still in the line, sorry. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thanks for having me, Sandy, and the rest of your group. I'm Bill Maloney from coming. Morgantown. I was the last guy in this race, but somehow or other I'm on top of the Republican ballot. Those balls dropped the right way for me. I don't know how that happened. But a little bit about me. I've got my wife Sharon at 29 years here. She's lucky. I'm a lucky guy. She'd be a great first lady back there. But uh, I have two, two grown daughters. Uh, went to University High, 28 and 25. We attend Chestnut Ridge Church outside of Morgantown. I'm a graduate industrial engineer from Lehigh University. And uh, that's about all I did. I started in Charleston working for somebody that drilled holes for coal mines, and three years into that, I decided I, I could do this better. And there were all these ventilation shafts that needed to be drilled for the mines. So a fellow I was working with uh, and I, we got together and we started what was called North American Drillers in 1984 in Morgantown, just the two of us. And over the next uh, 23 years, we grew it. We had 150 people. We were drilling shafts up to 18 foot diameter. Uh, Created quite a monster, I'd say, but I sold out my interest in 2006. Uh, since that time, I've helped a lot of other people start companies, one of which was my friend Brandon Fisher. And you probably read, we're all over the radio now, and everything. I won't bore you with all this. But we, he started in Westover in 1998 and had the idea of making these hammer drills that would drill real fast in hard rock. And between myself and Brandon, we both heard that those guys in Chile, when they were buried underground, it was going to take four months to drill a hole to get them out. And I didn't even know he was working on anything. I was email and direct to the site within a day and uh, talking about what they were doing on the existing drill and back and forth. The next thing you know, I was told, well, hammers are unproven technology. Well, that kind of drove me crazy. But Brandon was working on a similar idea and we, I learned it a day or two later and I ended up a week from then. I was in Chile with Brandon and uh, Plan B was hatched by people all over the globe. Eight Americans were on the rig. Nobody realized how many people there from America, but good American know-how and ingenuity got those guys out of the ground, I'll tell you right now. Along with the good Lord, he was there. I know it. I saw so many things that just uh, hit me. It was like a calling to be there, and I'm so glad I was. But I feel the same way now about this governor's race. Uh, I think some of the special election was all going on when I was down there in Chile. I didn't really follow it. Uh, the mansion special election, the last one. But I missed a lot of that. But then I got back, and you know, Earl Ray's going to be the new governor for two years, and then all of a sudden he's sued, and we can't. You know, it's all just surreal what's going on in Charleston. And I, I know. Two years ago, some folks approached me about doing this job, and at the time, we met with the Republican Governors Association, some other groups, and my family was not into it, so we decided at that time not to do it. But since being back from Chile and seeing what you can do when you set your mind to it and see how people can come together and quit worrying about the surreal things, worry about what's real, I really learned that down there. Nobody worried about whose fault that was. We worried about getting them out. And our state's the same way. We need to worry about getting us out of this mess. It, we have so many good things in West Virginia. We just need to fix a few things, and I think we'll be fine. But my years in business, I learned the hard way a lot of times that, you know, some of our rules don't really make it easy to be in business in West Virginia. I know I'm preaching the choir there. But simple things, and it's my ideas are based on my conservative values. I'm 100% pro-life. I'm for traditional marriage. I love guns. But I like businesses to thrive because that's how you create wealth and how you grow your economy, how you keep your kids here. But simple things like fixing our aggressive tax system, you now people are just fed up, I think, with some of our taxes. Uh, the worst one I see is our, they call it personal property tax, where counties raise money based on your capital equipment. It's more than, a, it's just a capital equipment tax. Why would you invest in a new steel mill or a new chemical plant when you're going to pay tax on that thing year after year? Our drill rigs every year, we have to keep track of every county they're in and figure out how much they're worth. And, you know, we built them out of the scrapyard. We had a guy one time in Hinton tell us that it was worth $3 million, this rig we had down there. It was from the front page of the paper July 1st. That's how we got caught. But, <laughs> I mean, we had, it's so regressive, and trying to keep track of all that and keep up with the things. We need to fix that system. And the inventory tax, I think there was a constitutional amendment proposed this year that didn't get anywhere, didn't get into committee. We need to fix that. And then you look at some of the bureaucracies we have. Uh, I'm a certified water well driller. I'm still trying to keep my license. I don't know if I have enough credits or not. I just submitted my, uh, you know, my. Uh, what do you call it? my application for renewal. And I, nobody can tell me if I have enough credits. I've been to class everywhere. It's just one bureaucracy gone amok down there in Charleston, along with, I think my old company, we had two things on the wall when I started in 1984. There's about 30 now, all the different pieces of paper and little fiefdoms created. We've got to change that. And uh, then there's our court system. I covered Clark mentioned the intermediate court. We need that so bad. And it passed the Senate, thank you, but the House wouldn't take it up. I don't know why. 
Maybe there's just too many lawyers in Charleston. You guys aren't lawyers, aren't you? <laughs> oh, they're, oh, sorry, 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 Mark. You're not in Charleston. You're just, but, maybe. <laughs> but you know, we need to fix that. We need an intermediate appellate court. We need to stop our lawsuit abuse problem because it makes it tough to be in business. It's hard to, you know, the homegrown businesses. We'd like to stay, and. It's hard enough to keep the homegrown guys here, trying to lure in somebody from out of state to locate here. I'm, I'm in the energy industry. I've since uh, being out of the shaft drilling business, I've been in the oil business a little bit. I drilled a directional well on the Ohio River right up here in uh, Belmont. And uh, you just see the bureaucracy, I'm mean, sorry, you see what can be done with our energy, but yet we have this huge severance tax, we have all these rules, and we should be promoting, like the Marcellus Shale is a huge thing for this state. And I know there's a bill going through, and it didn't make it. I think maybe because there's so many strings attached, it got killed by a lot of different people. I think I'm right on that. It just, but it, we need to be proactive and promote our uh, industries like the Marcellus Shale. And in addition to drilling and extracting that gas, we need to have the add-on industries I know are out there. I looked at building drilling rigs when I got back from Chile, and I would never build them in West Virginia the way the laws are. I'd be in Pennsylvania, just because of the tax system, legal system, everything that goes with it. But we need to. We should be manufacturing drill rigs for Marcellus Shale and frack tanks, and we should have all kinds of business, not just the people coming from Oklahoma drilling wells in here. We should have homegrown businesses right here. And I know we can do it. West Virginia is a great place. I had some of the best, most loyal employees. They're the greatest. But we need to just keep them here, keep our kids here, and I think we fix a few of those things, we can do it. As I said, uh, I'm not a politician. I'm a businessman. I've been at it for almost 30 years now in West Virginia. And I think we need some of it in Charleston. We need some leadership. You can definitely tell by the legislative session that there's no leadership. We just need leadership. And we can do it. I know we can. And we've, we're on the cusp of something really good here. I know, uh, what was it, 1930 or something, West Virginia was 30th in per capita income. I just heard this from an economics fellow the other day. Now we are 48th. And the only two states behind us are Mississippi and Louisiana. Well, I'll tell you what, those, those folks are in the red camp now. They're all Republican. And West Virginia needs to be next, or we'll be number 50 quick. But anyway, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, thank you for all your interest and your passion. And I look forward to earning your support and your vote.